I want to be of that generation of politicians that that takes action rather than ones that rather than those that put their head in the sand. I live in outer London, greater London, just on the very edge of South London. With 14 weeks to go until ULES goes live, I have no way at all of purchasing another second-hand car or paying the ULES charge. I'm, I'm terrified. What on earth do I do? I've been turned down for the scrappage scheme. Well, Charlotte, thanks for ringing in. I'm really sorry you've been turned down for the uh, scrappage scheme. Uh, if I could explain why we're doing this, it wasn't an easy decision for... for, for I will for, make for, you address her directly for, after for, you've given us the... For me to picture. do, sure, sure. It wasn't an easy decision for me to do, Charlotte, but in your part of London, in outer London, the area's worse than in central and inner London. The 10 boroughs with the worst area in our city are all in outer uh, at London. Uh, more than two-thirds of those who suffer from asthma and other issues live in outer uh, London. We will make progress in cleaning the air in outer London. It's an issue of social justice and uh, racial justice. So the scrappage scheme that you mentioned, £110 million, is money from City Hall, not a penny from the government. And it's deliberately targeted towards people like you to receive uh, help, whether you're an individual like you, whether you're a small business, uh, uh, whether you're a sole trader, whether you're a charity. So, uh, again, what I'll do, Charlotte, is if I, if I take your details afterwards, I'll look into why you've not been deemed eligible. Do you, do you know what reason they gave you for not um, being so eligible I'm for the scrappage scheme? I'm on, I'm on a low income. Yeah. I work in healthcare. Yeah. I'm a single parent with three children at university. Yeah. So I am absolutely reliant on my car for my shift work in the hospital sure. and for getting the kids to university. Um, you know, this was their goal. They all went to local schools in South London. Great. I want to get them all cracking. I want to get them there. Um, I, I'm I, not on benefits. Um, I'm not on universal credit. Yeah, you don't need to be on benefits to, to, to be eligible for the... Uh, Did they the give you a scheme. reason, Charlotte? Um, uh, well, all I know is that I've applied online four times and each time it's come back to me. Unfortunately, you are not eligible. Computer says no. Charlotte, let me again, t t please give James the team your details and uh, I, I promise will, you I'll, I'll, I'll look so into this. And, and, and keep, get back on to me yeah, if yeah. you don't so, hear so, from so, me. So give, give James the team your phone number, don't, don't say it on air uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll get my team to ring you How today. How many people are in Charlotte's position? Uh, so... Uh, the good news is nine out, more than nine out of ten people in outer London, more than nine out of ten have compliant vehicles. So actually the number of people who have a non-compliant vehicle is actually quite small. Uh, the figure is, I think, 200,000 uh, vehicles uh, are, are non-compliant in, non in outer London. And that's why we've got this scrappy scheme, £110 million. Uh, pounds. Many people think their vehicle is uh, non-compliant when it actually is. And so what I'd encourage your listeners to do is go to the TFL website, type in your number plate, see if your vehicle's compliant. Have you done that, Charlotte? Oh, a hundred times. Okay. I, I've tried everything. And with 14 weeks to go, I... I can, hear the, I can hear the panic. Well, I can the hear the panic Charlotte in your is, voice. The good, the good news, Charlotte, is there's still, there's still a lot of money left in the scrappy scheme. So give James's team your mobile, your, your phone number. At, we'll speak to you later on today. OK. And see what we can do. Uh, and, uh, you know, 200,000 others? Did you say? Uh, well, no, they're, they're, they're a lot, that's when we first... So how many people this, so do we know are in Charlotte's not, position we've, we've now? Not, we, 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 when we began the process uh, three years ago, 39% of vehicles complied, now it's 9 out of 10, so it's going down every day, every week in relation to those who are non-compliant. We, we, we circle this quite a lot, and I, it's absolutely no solace to, to anybody like Charlotte and, and many, many other people, but you, you, you have made a calculation here, haven't you, that the, the plight of people like her, if it turns out that you can't help her, is a price worth paying for the, it's a utilitarian calculation, for, for the improvement, the overall improvement in the quality of the air that London breathes? Well, y yes and no. Uh, there, uh, there Give me the no, because I, I understand the yes. Because, because, we, because I'm conscious of concerns like people like Charlotte is why we set aside £110 million to support them. Uh, because even though we lobbied the government to give us the same support they gave to Birmingham and Portsmouth and Bath and have a scrappage scheme, the government said no for reasons is, best them that, that's, that's completely clear, is it? They gave money to those cities yeah, to provide yeah, a scrappage yeah. scheme and they didn't give any to uh, London. Uh, yep, and, and we've lobbied them. Uh, and by the way, nor have they given money to those areas outside of London where, where they, they claim to uh, be concerned about. And so because you know, I, I'm concerned about people like Charlotte, we've set aside this £110 million. And I've been criticised, by the way, from some green groups for saying, why are you subsidising people who've got polluting vehicles? Why, okay. are you, why are you rewarding them? But I, but it's because I, I understand the concerns of people like Charlotte and many others, by the way, who, you know, for, for no reason or fault of their own, 
are driving a vehicle that's But you're, you're, you're ducking it a bit because we're, we're presuming, and I hope that this is not the case, but we're presuming that you can't help her. And even if you can, there's plenty of people that are going to be caught in this. They can't afford a new car. Oh, listen. They don't qualify for scrappage. And that, that they are the price you are prepared yeah. to pay. It's a bit like Lord Farquhar in no, Shrek it, saying some people are going to die, but that is a price I am prepared to pay. Look, in politics, the, 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 the easy and lazy thing to do is try and be universally popular and duck the tough issues and kick the can down the road. I think the issue of climate change and air quality is an issue that deserves and demands addressing now. Uh, and so I could set a target for, you know, 2050 or 2060 or 2070. I could allow every year, you know, 4,000 people on average to die every year because of air quality issues and children to have stunted lungs in perpetuity and adults with a whole host of health issues from asthma, cancer, dementia, heart disease. Or I can take these tough actions. And by the way, James, this isn't the first time politicians have done things that may appear unpopular and unfair banning smoking in public places in 2006. I voted uh, for that when I first introduced the ULOs in Central London. We, you and I were here uh, and we were told the problems that caused for Central London and so forth. C removing power stations from the heart of our city in the 1950s, building sewers in the 1850s. So listen, I want to be of that generation of politicians that, that takes action rather than ones that, rather than those that put their head in the sand.